Forsberg Reggie below them. Now the starting group for the visitors. We got Jay all out there with Red Hot. And it's the machine. And it's A Train in at the three, the small forward. Red Hot is out there with Jay. And it's Reed. Then there's Insanity. And it's Smooth in at the three spot. To the paint. Here's Stewart. Tries again. In the corner, Reed with it. To the middle, they shoot again. And finally, that one's good. I like that decision right there. Don't try to force the shot inside, kick it out. Here's Ball. And it's Reed pulling it out. Gone just one or four to get this game started. Here's Ramsey, and he drops in the layup off the glass. Way to create just enough separation to get that shot to go. Well, to me, that's about skill overcoming size, and how about the fearlessness at the offensive end? And now, just over a minute play here in the first. Gone two of five here, making 40% so far to start out the game. And Bill, when you yourself get out on the court, is there a play you try to channel or emulate, you try to visualize in your mind? You mean when I'm playing pickup? Yes, yes. Oh, now, at this point in my life, I, it's Davos Bertans. Is that how you say his name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Davis Burton. Davis Burton. Yeah, yes. By the way, great stroke. I, mean, I yeah. emulate all stretch fours in yes. regard to anybody. Yeah. That's who I am at this point in my life. I run from three point line to three point line. You stay in the perimeter. Yeah. Don't don't tangle up inside. My free throw attempts are zero yep. because I don't go to the line. Just fire away. And I just I want you to know I'm there to make an open jump shot. And don't ask me to do anything else, please. I'll set some picks. Uh, no, yeah. You are. You do. You're a great screen. I'll set set some picks. You're a great pick and roll. And good to get him going early. That, that shot should give him some confidence. It's all about mindset out of the gate. If you're aggressive and they give you room, go ahead, let it fly. And the passer floated it up to the precise spot it needed to be. And no messing around on the finish. He powers it through. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. Yeah, good job to take it right at the end. Bill, do you ever think we're going to eliminate conferences in the NBA playoff seating? I think that they would have done a 16 seed no conference playoff format years ago. I think they were really worried about the travel, though. Mm -hmm. And they've looked at it, and they've really studied it, and they've looked at the effects of, let's say, Boston plays Portland in round one, and you're flying 3,100 miles or 3,200 miles and three time zones and all that stuff, and it's a 2 2 one, one, one series. What is the effect on the team if it goes seven? I think they're really afraid of it. Mm -hmm. um, I wish they did it. I don't like the conferences. I don't really understand them. And over the course of NBA history, they've been really confused by the conferences. I wrote about this in the Book of Basketball, where we had years where San Antonio was playing in the East for a yes, while, yes. and Baltimore was in the West. Which, go look at a map. Baltimore being in the West is ridiculous. Ba Baltimore was in the West and Philly was in the East and they're like 50 miles away from each other. Yeah, no so sense. they never really 100% figured out the conferences. And I just think the 1 through 16 makes more sense. It would sure be better basketball. It would be better. Yeah. I've seen a handful of players land the Supermax contract bill, by and large. How do you see those deals working out? It's tough. You're, nobody's really been happy with it yet. You know, it's so much money and it's such a big part of somebody's salary cap. And you're just kind of handicapped with it. And we've seen John Wall is the worst case scenario. But the situation Charlotte was in with Kemba Walker, where he makes the NBA team and now his Supermax is $240 million right. instead of one a Like, that's crazy. And in a salary cap league, to pay $50 million a year for somebody, He's just nuts. It compromises the ceiling of the team. So the Bucks are going to be in this position, to be honest, where he's making $55 million a year and the cap's 120 How are you going to put a good team around You can't him? maneuver. You can't. Mm. So I, I would put a wrinkle in there that I would make the Supermax, whatever, pay the player whatever the number is, but it only counts for like $32 million or something. Make it so that it's not for a percentage of the total cap. Yeah, yeah, make his cap figures 32. Even if you're paying him 55, and then that way people could compete better.
Here's Brenna. It's good. He scores. That's his first basket. Red missing his first two attempts. Now one for three. Bill, you study pop culture. The 2K Esports League is, is a phenomenon right now, which is sweeping the country. Do you think it's going to alter the perception of gaming in any way? Yeah, I would say it has one of the best chances of any esports league to succeed because people just love basketball. Mm -hmm. And you can feel it there in the offseason. The shift in basketball content and the fact that it's now a 12-month-a-year sport for us, and now it goes from the playoffs to the draft to where are people going in free agency, and then that plays out for a month, and then something else will happen. All of a sudden, it's summer August. Leagues, summer leagues yeah, are summer coming leagues up. happening, yeah. and then all of a sudden, the season's close, and and then you just kind of recycle, and it's a 12-month-a-year sport. <laughs> right. And a nice job here early of establishing an inside presence. Fresh, the pass to Pop. We've got 128 left here in the first quarter. Down to five on the shot clock. A three-pointer off the mark. Bill, I wanted to go back to what you were talking about with the 2K League, and you mentioned how basketball has grown into essentially a 12-month-a-year sport. For me, a 2K Esports League just makes sense. It fits into that. I think people love the players. I think they care about these athletes in just in basketball so much more than the other sports. And for me, it's really gratifying because I've loved basketball my whole life. And for a while there, I, I, when I grew up as a kid, they were tape delaying the finals and... You know, it was like the second tier league, and now to see how popular it is and how much people love it, uh, it's just, I feel like I was in early. I'm sure you do too. Absolutely. I mean, when Magic Johnson is a rookie and starting at center, yeah. in game six in Philadelphia, yes. And, and it was tape delayed. And it was tape delayed. My beloved Boston Celtics won the 1981 title, and it was on tape delay in Boston, and I went to bed, and my dad woke me up to watch the game for me. It's not even 40 years ago, so. Uh, so I think the other thing that really helps with the 2K Sports League is that these guys play mm -hmm. 2K, the actual players. <laughs> right. They have. They care about it. They care about it. They have an incredible amount of time on their hands because they're too famous and they can't go anywhere. So they're in hotel suites. They're bringing with the PlayStation bringing their Xbox stuff. with me right. with them. Uh, they're playing their friends. They're playing each other online, and this is what they're doing all day. <laughs> Pass to Stewart. Unloads. And the last shot before the buzzer is off. A good game so far as we conclude the first quarter. Wow. And this has been a fairly close game through the first quarter, and we'll see what happens here in the second. Guys, what's your take on the home team so far? They set a physical tone in the first, and that really showed on the backboard. I think it's why they hold the lead here early, because they're controlling the flow of the game with those second-chance opportunities. Being 43% for the game. Bill, you host your own podcast. I've listened to it. I subscribe to it. Thank I you. I love it. What do you make of some of the NBA players now doing the same thing? Hey, we have a couple of them. We At the ringer, we have J.J. Reddick, and we have Vince oh, Carter and Ken Bazemore. Uh, the ones that are good at it take it seriously. It can't be one of those things where, you know, a player says, you know what, I want a podcast, and then it just magically happens. And you got to work on it. You have to use your connections and book your guests, and you have to be candid on the podcast. You can't just show up and just babble. And the guys that have been successful at it, are people that could probably have a media career for a living. Like, J.J. is clearly going to go in the media after he retires. Richard Jefferson had a great podcast. He's gone in the media. He's really good. So I think you need a little more talent at it that people realize. And you need the consistency of it. You can't say, I'm starting a podcast and then not do it for two months. Like, you have to really stick to it. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor, all fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. The machine is out there with insanity. Then there's Jay. Then there's Easy Breezy. And it's Powell in at the point guard. Here's insanity. Six on the shot clock. Kicks it to Powell. On deep. No good on that one. Gotten only one of their first four shots in the second quarter to drop. 
And from everything we're hearing, Bill, the draft's one and done aspect may be coming to an end. Like it? For me, the G League is the key to all this. I would like to see the guys come right out of high school and go to the G League and have an actual infrastructure that's attached to the game. And the G League is having an effect on the NBA. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, like, sports rights are becoming more and more valuable with streaming services and just the fact that you can watch a game anywhere you are. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it if you're in China. You can watch it if you're in Hawaii. And I think the G League should be a bigger thing. So if they can figure out a way to kind of steal college basketball's corner with some of this stuff while also preparing these guys. The one and done that makes no sense to me. I don't understand what anyone gains from going to college for five months and then pretend they're a college student. Yes, that goes in. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the second quarter. And you can see him give a little nod and then just burst to the rim for the alley-oop slam. A pair of teammates, Greg, with a terrific feel for each other. Here's the machine, Reed covering. Here's Insanity. Here's the machine. Nice work on the board. It's paying off with the basket. The machine's got four points this quarter. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. You've been producing documentaries going deeper into athlete stories, which I know you love, because I think you're curious more than anything else. Yeah. So, so what drew you to that process? Initially, it was... Uh we dove into these stories we thought that was the inefficiency of instead of these big broad documentaries concentrate on events and players and moments and things like that and i think as you get into that and you start doing it it just becomes intoxicating and the cool thing about it is no story should be told the same way you would tell somebody else's story you just don't know you got to figure it out like we had Steve Nash, his last Lakers season, he wanted to do a documentary about it, and then we spitballed it, and we decided it was actually a better idea to do an in-the-moment digital series about it that we could experience in that time with the thing. And it was the right idea, and that was really good. I think trying to figure out what story clicks the best with an athlete, how to tell whatever story they have correctly, is the coolest part of it. Ramsey passes to Winston. Always going up for the alley-oop here. And now here comes Jones in the break, and he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And while we can, let's have a look at the 2K leaderboard to find out who have been the most efficient scorers in the NBA this month. Look at the machine. You know what you're going to get from him day in and day out. It would be hard to imagine him shooting the ball much better than he has. He has been on fire. Passes to Fresh. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. It's his first trip to the line. He misses the free throw. And out he's checked in for champ. Fresh. Two shots. No luck that time either. Gotten a little under 50% of their second quarter shots to find the mark. Four of nine all told. Want easy looks? Don't allow the defense to set up. What a beautiful fast break opportunity and the finish pretty good. Ramsey passes to Fresh. Out to the right wing. Shot clock at six. Nice open look, but it's no good. Boy, defense nowhere to be found and neither was his shot at that time. Well, Bill, I know you've got to run. Marvelous to have you on the program. Wish we could do it more often. Let's do it right now. I don't have to run. Can you I stay? Yes, you can All always right. stay. Well, I don't want to leave. You have a free ticket here I, anytime I, I, I you want. I want to stay, please. The microphone's always open. Thank you. <laughs> well, Doris, you read most reporters. They try to stay impartial, but not Bill Simmons. Well, I think that's what makes him special, Kevin, right? He has his own lens through which he sees things, and he is unafraid to give you his opinion trying to snap them out of this little slump. Just feels like the basket is looking awfully small to them right now. They're having a hard time getting anything to fall. Pass to Reed. 
And play stops. Whistle on what looks to be an illegal screen. Already a lot of talk about who's going to take part in the three-point contest this season. And here's a look at the players most likely to make it. And so many great shooters in the NBA these days. And, and these guys, quite frankly, the best of the best. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a scoring record broken in this year's competition. Well, you look at Jay. He's going to need to leapfrog quite a few great shooters if he's going to be a part of the three-point festivities in All-Star Weekend. But, you know, maybe he can do it. I mean, it, anything's possible, especially if he has a few big games from beyond the arc before All-Star Weekend. That gives him a nice bump in the boat. And it's going to be an exciting showcase this year. Some incredible shooters, that's for certain. We'll keep you updated as we find out more. Yeah, I think we're in for a real treat. I, I think the increased importance of the three-point shot in today's game has really shined a light on the talent, precision, and, and really the wow factor of how these guys can drill the long ball. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. On 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. Here's Fresh. Wide open shot is on the money. Fresh has got his first points in this one. Outstanding pass on time and on target. Picked away. The pass to Red. Here's Fresh. Here's Smooth. Got a piece of it. Here's Jay, and so it's the visiting team going into the break with a 10-point lead. They're pounding the ball. Full game from the machine. The way he was able to finish on the block was incredible there in that first half. It felt like his work on the interior really gave this offense a boost. Let's see if he can dominate the rest of the way. in this game 45 percent and on the floor for mike budenholzer starting the second half the machine is out there with a train then it's ball then there's red hot and it's jay in at the five spot if you were coaching doris and you could run your offense through any center in the game and let's take guys that are playing right now because we can go back in history and the names are endless who would you run your offense through with that position? Probably a guy that the casual NBA fan is not as knowledgeable about as they should be, Kevin, and that's Nikola Jokic. And mm. this is a young, early 20-year-old who may be the best passer out of the post position that we've seen in a generation. Jokic is a guy who can handle the ball from three-point territory. He can take it off the window and initiate your offense. They run him like a point center and it's appropriate because he's unselfish and gifted as a passer. Gifted, great word to use, you're right. Let out the pass to Reed. Here's Smooth. Fouled in the act of shooting, gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. What's up? Moving it around, eight of their last ten coming off assists. First trip to the free throw line for him tonight gone two of three from the field to start the second half. Ball with the bucket. Ball's got 12. That's three of four here to start the half. Being 43% from the field. Here's Red Hot. He's covered by Ball. Red Hot the pass to Smooth. Beyond the arc. Buries the long range jumper. Ten points for him. Start to this half. Three for three, dictating the pace on the offensive end. They're rolling early. Some solid defense from Reed. Gone three of three from the field since halftime. Here's Ramsey, drilled from 11 feet out. Jay's got it, got his second bucket. Great play calling, great execution leads to four for four to start this half. Ball, no good. Well, he did everything right till he got to the rim. He needs to finish that. Let's it go from the wing. And no good. But only the first miss of the second half. They've come out here with authority. Jay. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. Ball's got three assists tonight. Well, we see a lot of emphasis on three-point shooting nowadays, but you'll take that look right there any night of the week. And so Brad Stevens decides to call timeout. And no doubt, Coach wants them to shore up their interior defense. 
I think right now they're giving up way too many easy looks. That is a recipe for disaster. Gotten four of the first five second half shots to fall. 80% since the break. A little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the third. Here's Winston. And that one goes long. 47% pretty solid. Jones, the pass to Jay. Bell time pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. Jay's got it, got six points in the quarter. Yeah, that's the third bucket in a row from the paint. This defense needs to clog those lanes in the middle. Pass to the machine. Here's Champ. And there's the defensive three second call. And the technical free throw, missing that time. They'll retain possession here, however. Three minutes gone now in the third quarter. Passes it to Hughes. Here's the machine. Here's Powell, shot clock at five, and he's able to get it back. And here's the fast break. Here's Jay, and he caps off the fast break with a monster slam. And with the pace of today's game, transition defense is at a premium. I don't think anyone was catching him on that play. That is unbelievable. Now here's Powell. He's tightly guarded. The shot by Hughes, no good. And the edge on the glass is the difference. It's allowed them to build this lead. gone one or two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. The pass to Winston. Here's the machine defended by Jones. Powell for three, and the three ball is good. Powell's got six points. He can be a forgotten man in their offense sometimes, but the D still has to keep an eye on him. Here's Insanity. Makes it off the glass. And that's ten straight points in the paint. The defense nowhere to be found. Now here's Paul. He started close. No good off the back of the rim. Boy, a clean, close look. What a missed opportunity. Here's Jay. Up and in on the layup. Jay's got to got 10 points here in the second half. Big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. And that's typical of this guy. He's always reading the situation, reacting quickly and capitalizing. That's a two from Powell. Can't nail the jump. I think he's got to settle down because right now it feels like he's rushing, like he's forcing some shots. This quarter he has been completely bothered. They get it back. Here's Big Smooth. Misses the layup. He had him with that bump fake. Gone just a bit under 50% for the field since halftime. Five out of 11. And there's the basket. Whistle blows and a chance for a three-point play. Going to the line for one. Yeah, the D has not been able to keep the ball out of the paint at that end of the floor. So both teams changing it up here. The free throw drops for Pop. 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Ball against Powell. Ball with the bucket. Ball's got seven now in this quarter. That is such a tough matchup for smaller defenders out there. He can simply shoot right over them. Pass to Jay. Can't get it to fall. Gone three of six tonight when they've let it fly from downtown. For the three. 
That one misses. Gone one and two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Here's G. Pass to Insane. Fresh pulls it in. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take it back. Unhindered, going all the way. He gets it in there. Insanity's got his second basket of the night. Well, the pass to set up that bucket was terrific. Fired it right up the court. Didn't allow the defense to react in time. Nice. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be difficult to overcome. The away team up by 15. And meanwhile, Coach Brad Stevens talking to his team. Talk about it in the pregame. We have to play with game awareness and poise. Run back on defense, get great shots down here every... And we reach the fourth quarter in a game that may be already out of hand. around 40 percent from the floor here great out there with smooth then it's fresh then there's red hot and it's jay in at the two guard spot the shot no good jay has got it gone one of six shooting from the field here's miracle man hits the jump hook unselfishness can be infectious terrific teamwork Steps back and fires. He is just really almost playing for the other team. The shooting has just been poor. Got that one up quick. A train's got his first basket of the night. Yeah, they're rolling right now. That lead continues to grow. And one of the things that's helped that is they're getting it done on both ends. Terrific focus on offense, and they're locked in defensively. No good on the shot. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really, right from the tip. Their rebounded edge right now, massive. Gone 0-3 to start the fourth quarter. Here's Red Hot. And he banks in the lane. A lot of competitors in this league, Doris, and you've got to be that way to play at this level. I know you have a list of competitors that you admire a lot. It's those guys, Kevin, who have that insatiable desire to win. The guys who absolutely despise losing, who it almost hurts. It's painful physically. Giannis Antetokounmpo is driven to be great. He wants an NBA championship. LeBron James has got multiple titles and continues to pursue greatness. What I love about great NBA players it's never enough Kevin here's smooth Stewart passes to smooth another shot can't get it to go he's made four and just missed his fourth and the pass to Jay that's the sixth make from the field. He's taken nine shots and missed but three. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. And he's going up for the alley -oop. And the dunk by Reed. And how about the communication between teammates on that alley -oop? And that's what you need to pull that thing off. And he dunks it down. Boy, what else is new? This guy's accuracy this quarter has been phenomenal. Just over two and a half minutes played now here in the final quarter of regulation. It's stolen. And that one's good by G. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. Hope loose. It's stolen by G. Here's A Train. Stepped in the line, out of bounds there, and that will cost them the possession. Jones checked in for G. Two of seven from the field, and what's been a cold start to the fourth quarter for them. 
Yes, this do it. Over to the left wing. Red hot. No good from outside. Gotten it done so far from the field here in the fourth. Going six for seven. Jones, the pass to Jay. Passes it to Red Hot. We played just over three and a half minutes now in the fourth quarter. Now the pass is smooth. Let's it go with a three. Doesn't go that time. And the great shooters know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice on that possession. Well, overall, they're the team getting the better looks here in this second half. And I think what's happening is they're getting their shots within the flow of their offense, and you can clearly see the difference. Well, just tremendous composure on the interior. Read the defense, take advantage of the situation, and deliver. Outside, Jones connects from three-point range. And he gives up some Defender fails to close the gap. It's incredible to me how players have become so adept at creating just enough space to get the shot off. Nicely done. Tries a three. Sinks the three-pointer. Getting off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Here's Red Hot. Here's Smooth. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Of course, you and I were just talking about something Commissioner Silver said the other day about a proposed mid-season tournament. What do you think? Well, I certainly think if they do move to a mid-season tournament, it's going to have to have real value for it to matter. To get the fans engaged, something has to be on the line. So, number one, you obviously, you're going to have two goals. Instead of one championship, maybe you want to win that mid-season tournament, too. So, Mike Budenholzer decides to take a timeout here. Now, the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Jane. And he's just been crushing it from the field tonight, Kevin. Whether it's been on open looks or with the guy draped all over him, he just hadn't missed much. With his percentage in the sky-high range, they've had no choice but to make him their number one option on every trip. He got an extra boost from the grief these fans were giving him here tonight. They were riding him hard all night, and he ate it up. Some guys just like being the villain, I guess. Here's Ball. Can't connect from 13 feet out in this fourth quarter pretty dire at 27 percent over to the wing pass to smooth great look but off the mark gone five of nine when they put up the three-point shot tonight from deep three-point range no good that time being at 36 percent they really seem out of sync offensively passes it to winston 41 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. You know, didn't need two hands for that slam. One will do just fine. You're right. He can save the other hand for the next <laughs> time. And Ball slams it in. But the truth is they've had control of this game. And I couldn't agree more. What makes it that much more impressive, they're doing it on the road. Here's the machine. And there's the pass to Winston. Six to shoot. The 15 footer. Almost, but it rolls out. Ball feeling it out a bit. They get a hand on it. And so it's a victory for the road team in this one. To come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says, I think, Greg, an awful lot about this team. I, I